you may start your presentation. Thank you, Jackie. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Cordell McGarry, and I work with the Department of Procurement Services uh, in the administration of approximately six certification programs. We're going to talk about two of those programs this afternoon, the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise and Airport Concession Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. These are federal programs that are governed under the United States Department of Transportation. So during the course of our workshop today, we're going to talk about the program requirements, talk a little bit about the certification process, touch on the application and the benefits of being certified as a DBE and or ACDBE with the city of Chicago, and typically what can happen uh, once you're certified. And hopefully at the outcome, everyone will want to rush. If you haven't been certified, you'll rush and want to get certified or will consider it in your strategies for the uh, months to come. So uh, again, the certification programs, the DBE and ACDBE programs are part of a group of certification programs that are under the auspices of the Department of Procurement Services. The Department of Procurement Services, basically we are the contracting authority for the procurement of all goods and services for the city of Chicago and its departments. We have an average spend, I would say of about 2 billion a year. And that, that average spend covers most things from the ink pens to fire trucks, from uh, let's say consulting services, um, to actual, let's say, uh, uh, copy machines or or computers. We, we contract for a variety of different goods and services. And as such, we, we do have a lot of things on our plate. We work together as a team with you, our, our customers, to guarantee an open, fair, and timely process in that endeavor. Uh, we do that by uh, efforts that we're do discussing today, such as um, our DPS alerts, um, our buying guide, and other other items in the effort to try to communicate uh, and, and enforce those practices to make sure that you're informed and, and aware of what's going on. So the uh, DBE and ACDBE programs, again, as I mentioned, the federal programs that are governed by the uh, United States Department of Transportation and the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration requirements. Um, the regulations are similar to regulations for all of our programs as the objectives of all of our certification programs are basically to ensure non-discrimination in the award and administration of contracts, contract opportunities, with the idea of trying to create a level playing field so that all of our businesses, uh, small businesses and those that are eligible for certification can compete fairly for those contract opportunities. Um, the DBE program provides guidance from a federal perspective on the participation of firms and, and those opportunities that come about. So the requirements for certification, the DBE program, ACDB program, and basically all of our programs focus on, on, on certain aspects. We want you to be a, a small business. Uh, the owners of the business or those that are controlled would, would be uh, considered to be socially and economically disadvantaged. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, those owners basically are involved in the management and operations of that business from the perspective that they have a thorough understanding of what products and services are provided by the business and that they, in fact, are actively involved in its operations. Businesses are generally certified not just by the end on the basis of individuals being socially or economically disadvantaged, but they're also certified by the, let's say, area specialization or product or service that they provide. And it's important that the owners of or those that are controlling the businesses have a basic understanding of, of those products and services that are being provided such that they can control the day-to-day -day operations of the business. In the case of airport concessions, normally if you think about it, you think about uh, businesses that are operating at the airport, the concession, the concept of airport concession certification can also include businesses that provide management consultation also of goods and services to those actual concessions that are operating at the airport. So uh, you can be an ACDBE, for example, if you supply, uh, let's say, goods and services to uh, maybe a food service operation at the airport, or if you provide, let's say, consultation in terms of marketing or accounting services, things like that. So uh, that's also something to think about as you're considering uh, airport concession certification. So in the area of, of social and economic disadvantage, we look at 
groups that are defined by the federal regulations as, as under the presumption of being dis, uh, disadvantaged socially. And these would include groups like Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, subcontinent Asian Americans, as well as Asian Pacific Americans and women. Now, that doesn't end right there. Those are just the groups that are presumed to be dis socially disadvantaged. There are other individuals that might feel that they can can prove that they are socially disadvantaged and they also have an opportunity to to on an individual case by case basis to make that argument. Um, and that's something that, that opens up the program to virtually anyone that can prove that or, or demonstrate that they were the victims of chronic discrimination um, and prejudice over a period of time. I mean, uh, the program is also targeted to small businesses and businesses are generally certified again by an area of specialization. Um, the concept of, of, of small business is tied to what's defined by the Small Business Administration or SBA as, you know, on an industry basis by, uh, let's say, classification by industry. So, and let, let me try to explain that. Uh, let's say, for example, I'm in business. My name's Cordell McGarry. I'm a plumber. Uh, I want to get certified generally as, as in my line of work as a plumber. Uh, the SBA pretty categorizes plumbing as a form of, of, of construction or contracting, construction contracting. And what they've done is they've pretty much established size standards for firms that are involved in certain segments of industry. So let's say, for example, a plumber uh, that's involved in construction, the SBA might say, well, your business, as long as you have, let's say, average gross sales not to exceed $15 million over a three-year period, you would be considered to be a small business. So it's classifications generally by the industry uh, that the firm is involved in. There are some industries, heavy construction, for example, that um, the average gross sales may be, may be substantially high. Like say, for example, um, some construction industry trades may have gross sales as high as 30 million, 39 million, and still be considered a small business in, in the eyes of the SBA. For the DBE program, there's a cap on the size limit. So that cap would be for those those firms that are in those type of industries, 23.98 million over three years. The average gross sales is generally information that we get off the business tax returns, which we'll talk about as well. For the uh, ACDB certification, there is generally a, a flat number that applies across the board to all firms. And that generally is around 56.42 million. And that reflects the investment a lot of concessions will, will make in getting established at the airport, where, where there may be a, a rather large capital expense and it gives you a chance to maybe recoup that expense in that sense. There are also exceptions for firms that are involved in car rentals, banks, and payphone companies, if there are still some around, as well as uh, automobile dealers, and they're categorized by the uniqueness of those types of businesses. But the idea is to try to establish the, the framework for what's considered to be a uh, small business as well. From the standpoint of economic disadvantage, the individual owners of, of, of the businesses that are seeking qualification as a DB or ACDBE, they should not have a personal net worth that would exceed 1.32 million after adjustments to exclude, let's say, for example, uh, the value of your personal residence or the investment in the actual business that is seeking certification. Um, for eligibility, it's considered that if your net worth exceeds the 1.32 million, then uh, you would not be economically disadvantaged. And again, the program is designed to try to create a level playing field for um, small businesses and those owners that are involved in the business. The certification process involves the one the completion of an application, as well as attaching supporting documents with that application. Um, which will then go through a review process um, for purposes of determination of eligibility. You can apply for certification online. Uh, the website is uh, www.chicago.mwdbe.com. Um, we only accept applications through the online process. We at one, we've ceased uh, accepting hard copy uh, applications. We've done that now for several years. The application process will basically also include a review of the documents that are provided as well as an on-site interview that will be conducted um, with the, between the agency and the business owner. Uh, given the current environment for, let's say, COVID, 
Um, we are doing a lot of the interviews virtually online or by way of Skype or um, Zoom or those type of methods. So, but there will be an interview that, that will be conducted as part of the process. Documents that are needed in the process of completing the ACDBE application or DBE application for that matter would be uh, evidence of citizenship or legal residency. We ask that uh, businesses also provide information regarding their investment in the business or proof of contribution. And believe it or not, even though many might not think so, everyone when they, uh, let's say, start a business, they contribute um, or they provide equity or capital to that business. It could be as, as small as maybe the paper that was used to write the business plan or the cost for a filing incorporation papers with the state to uh, perhaps making investments in the equipment that you're going to be using in the business. No matter how small or the type of investment, there is an investment that we just asked that owners document their investment or skin in the game, if you will, uh, in getting their business started. The two types of business documents that we'll also look for will pertain to the ownership or structure of the type of business. Um, there are sole proprietorships, partnerships, limited liability companies, and corporations that typically uh, will consist of, of owners, uh, from individual owners of the business to groups of people that are owning and operating the business. Uh, for sole proprietors, for example, if you're operating in a, you know, a name other than your own, would ask for a copy of an assumed name certificate, which would be filed by uh, the county, the Cook County, for a matter of fact. Um, if you're a partnership, you would have a partnership agreement. Limited liability companies should have uh, copies of administrative agreements that would include an operating agreement that talks about, uh, again, the uh, manner of which the business will conduct its, 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 its affairs. And with corporations more common, you would need articles of corporations and bylaws, which would incorporate the same type of, of premise. Other documents that will be needed in the application process would also include evidence of compensation of the owners. So typically we're asking uh, the applicants to provide copies of their compensation, which could include uh, W-2s or 1099 forms or other forms of, of compensation that was received by the owners for generally the last three years. For new businesses or startups where there might not be, um, it might, might not have been issuance of, of these type of forms, we could also look for um, compensation that the owners would have occurred from other sources. So for example, uh, if I worked um, for another plumbing company before I started my own, I would be looking for providing compensation, evidence of compensation from my former employee as well as my current, if that be the case. Um, we generally ask for three years of signed federal income tax returns. And again, this goes back to the three year average for gross sales because we do use that information to help us compute that. Uh, in the case of startup businesses, we recognize that um, this information may not be available. Um, the absence of this information would not prevent you from applying. You can apply, just tell the story about your business. It helps us to understand basically what's available. And of course, if you don't have three of the tax returns because you're a startup, it wouldn't be held against you, it's understood. Financial statements for the business, which would include the balance sheet, the uh, income and expense statements, any associated notes, uh, would also be required and we normally ask for three years if they are available. Uh, and again, going back to the individual owners, we will look for three years of basic assigned uh, U.S. individual tax, in tax returns, including all attachments and schedules. This information helps us to get a better sense of, of the business as well as the, uh, the, the eligibility from the standpoint of being uh, economically disadvantaged as well as the uh, business size standards. And during the process, um, there will be an on-site interview that's required. This on-site interview or virtual interview in this particular case is required as a result of federal regulations. And we have to do this. Um, so we will be contacting you during the application process to actually do the interview. The interview will touch on uh, aspects of the owner's uh, ownership of the business, their basic uh, involvement in the business on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, background, experience, things of that nature. So we will be looking at doing that. We will, let's say, in most cases, we'll reach out to you to schedule that, that interview as part of the process. Um, on rare occasions that we know we, if we have difficulty trying to catch up with you, we may just appear at your business. Again, that's a rare occasion. 
Um, so in most cases, you'll be hearing from our office with respect to doing that interview. And given again that the current environment that we're doing virtual interviews, um, you know, if proper, we will probably be reaching out to you and you will know there will not be any surprise visits. So after we've gotten all the information, what we do is then we will look at the uh, review from the standpoint of determining eligibility. The things we focus on are the ownership of the business. Is the business 51% um, at minimum owned by members of a group presumed to be associated economically disadvantaged? That ties into the second uh, bullet point with respect to that. Um, we look at the business size. Again, we're looking at the gross sales of the business to determine whether or not they fit the categories as determined by the Small Business Association. We look at economic uh, disadvantage from the standpoint of the individual's personal net worth. Again, if your net worth exceeds 1.32 million uh, after adjustments, again, to consider to remove your, the value of your personal residence um, and the, the, your equity in your business, then you know, we, we look at that to determine whether or not your your uh, economically disadvantaged and eligible for certification. Independence and control are important aspects of ownership that we can't stress enough. I mean, you, you we expect the owners to be independent of, of any outside influences with respect to managing and controlling their affairs. Um, we expect, for example, that the uh, equity investment that you place in the business comes from you as opposed to someone else who may um, be uh, have some degree of influence on, on your business operations. You should have the expertise, experience, uh, and background in the areas of certification that you're seeking to be able to manage and control it independently of having to depend on on anyone else. Again, if I'm if I'm operating as a plumber, uh, I should have the experience in the trade to be able to manage and control a business, no matter who I would have out there actually doing the work for me. Um, in that sense, as opposed to maybe just being involved in doing the payroll or doing the, let's say, administrative work in, in regards to making sure that the, the paperwork and stuff is done, handling accounts payable. Those are important aspects of the business, but if a business is certified in a particular area of specialization, like or plumbing, or let's say like uh, accounting, we would expect the owners to have that, you know, that expertise and background to be able to manage and control the business. Um, that being said, the burden of proof of, of, these, of these, these areas fall upon the applicant. So we look upon the applicant to, to demonstrate that they can, they are in fact the owner of the business, that they're disadvantaged, that the business is small, that they are economically disadvantaged and they are in control and managing the business. In short, we're looking at the applicants to tell the story. Tell the story about yourself. Tell the story about your business. It helps us to understand basically what's 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 going on. Um, we we don't probably one of the one of the aspects of, of the process that can slow down uh, the, the review of an application would involve uh, information that's that's not as clear as it could be. Like for example, um, if I if, if I am running a plumbing business and I don't provide a resume or, or information that details um, my experience in in, in this area. Um, that will result in, in time, additional time being spent to try to, you know, for the reviewer to try to determine whether or not the individual meets that aspect. If I'm the 51 or, uh, or, or more owner of a business and I can't document that by providing evidence that I've invested uh, a sufficient amount of money to, to have that, that percentage of ownership, um, that might make it a little difficult, and again, we'll we'll stall the processing of the application. So it's so important that you tell the story about the business and yourself. It really, I can't stress that enough. And you brought the burden of proof that unfortunately falls on you. So, the benefits of being certified. Well, in this case, there's no application fee. It's a federal program, um, and as such, there's no processing fee involved in in, in this at all. The certification as a DBE or ACDBE provides you opportunities for participation in, in all um, United States Department of Transportation and FAA federal funded contracts. And those contracts are generally um, led to the City of Chicago, Illinois Department of Transportation, Chicago Transit Authority, Metro and Pace. 
these five agencies are called the uh, Illinois Unified Certification Program. And that's a program that's mandated by the federal government. So the certification with any one of these organizations will automatically carry over to the others. So there's only one a need to be certified as a DBE or ACDB with only with any one of the agencies in order to participate in contract opportunities with the rest. The city, we have a relationship with a number of community-based agencies that provide assistance to uh, all of the small businesses and DBE firms, as well as our other programs. Um, these assist agencies, as they're referred to, they provide a variety of, the, of these services from, uh, let's say, you know, consulting on, on bookkeeping, how to keep your bookkeeping, they help you complete the application. Uh, they can help you with a lot of the disciplines related to uh, small businesses that will help marketing, accounting in that sense. So we um, ask that you take advantage of them and a list of those assist agencies can be found on, on our website. Uh, Department of Procurement Services. Finally, the, the program itself demonstrates that uh, our continued commitment to the success of minority and, and women-owned businesses. Um, again, the two programs, the DBE and ACDB programs, are part of a group of six that we offer, uh, all targeted toward, uh, again, trying to assist um, the minority and women-owned businesses in, in uh, seeking opportunities to participate in city owned city led contracts as well as extending to the private sector in many cases the uh, certifications that are offered by the city are also recognized by private sector businesses that have their own supplier diversity programs groups like let's say rush like university of chicago um, groups like that that have uh that want to commit to offering business opportunities to small minority and women-owned businesses so your certification with the city and any of our programs could also be valuable in getting those opportunities as well. We endeavor to try to complete the, the certification process within a 90 day period within average. Again, that would be as a subject to receiving a complete application with all supporting documents. Hopefully the story is, 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 is adequate enough that we can understand basically what it is that we're you know, being asked to do or, or certify. Um, so again, telling the story again is so so much important in this process. Um, so we, we endeavor to try to do that, and of course we we're here to work with you um, in the event you know that there's other, any other questions that you might have regarding the certification process itself. We provide one stop certification. I mentioned that earlier with regard to the unified certification program. Once you're certified with the city. That certification is accepted by our, our members, other members, uh, IDOT, Metro, Chicago Transit Authority, and PACE. Um, once you're certified in any of our programs, you can sign up for uh, alerts that are uh, provided by the Department of Procurement Services and Department of Aviation to alert you of contracting opportunities with the city of Chicago. Jackie, in her introduction uh, to this workshop, also talked about a buying plan which is um, we're, we're about to issue that, I think, in the next day or so, not by the end of the day. Uh, this buying plan is a forecast of, of business opportunities that we uh, you know, anticipate coming down the pipe that will involve um, not just the city of Chicago and its operating departments, but also other agencies like Cook County, uh, Chicago Transit Authority, Board of Education. So that's a very, very valuable tool that you could get. And you could get that by signing up for our DPS alerts. So all of our contracting opportunities, City of Chicago and the sister agencies, again, Board of Education, um, the Metropolitan Recreation District, uh, CTA, they can all be found online. So that kind of makes it, you know, really, really uh, convenient in one sense. And we advise we advise you to take advantage of those other those other opportunities. Go to those websites. Um, for example, the Board of Education. They have a procurement department. They are buying goods and services for its own purpose of, of its own operations. They look at uh, minority and women-owned participation. So these, you know, agencies like that, they they support our program, and we encourage you to actually go to those agencies to look for other contracting opportunities. So again, um, through our website, we have a list of agencies that provide assistance to not just DB firms but small businesses as well. These assist agencies provide services to assist in the business development. And I should also take a moment to also 
um, make you aware that our own city department of business affairs and consumer protection also has a great, uh, let's say, connection with small business development, um, financing groups like Axion, and they also provide assistance in regards to helping businesses navigate the process toward getting started and sustaining their operations. So we have a wealth of resources available, not just in the Department of Procurement Services, but also the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. So come, you know, check the city out, check our website out. You'll find, you'll be pleasantly surprised. I know I've said a lot in a short period of time, but I, I hope that, you know, you have a better understanding of the certification process. Again, with the DBE and ACDB certification programs are one of six that we that we offer. They're designed to try to provide assistance and, and uh, contracting opportunities to small minority women-owned businesses that uh, we consider to be social and economically disadvantaged. And we hope that, uh, that by doing this, we're assisting in the sustaining small businesses in, in, in our city, helping them to grow and become successful. Uh, that being said, I thank you for allowing me to talk. If there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them at this time. Yes, there are a few questions for you, Cordell. Uh, the first question is, if you have a woman-owned transportation business, do you need a CDL to apply for a women certificate? <clears throat> okay, so the question- I'm, I'm sorry, Cer certification, I'm sorry. Understood. understood. So the question is whether or not you need a CDL in order to be certified, basically, if I'm hearing it correctly. Um, right. Here's my answer to that. The owner may, may or may not may, may or may not have the CDL, but the owner should have the expertise and knowledge necessary to run a trucking concern. Now, if the city or state requires a CDL license for its actual operation, then I would I would suggest that the, the, that there be people that are working with you that have that license, but. For purposes of certification, it's going to be important that the owner has the expertise uh, in, in a particular field to be able to manage that business. So uh, I can't think of a trucking company yet where there's not someone that actually has the CDL license. So, I, I'm, you know, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the owner him or herself. All right. Are there any additional questions that anyone may have? Please use the Q&A. Uh, and send it to everyone so that we can get those questions answered for you. Um, so you can go ahead and um, while we are, uh, I, I will take the next one in just a second, but I just wanted to say while while we are, um, we're uh, waiting for some questions to come in, because uh, I know you might be typing them out. Uh, if uh, Cordell, if they have uh, submitted an application for uh, ABC of ACVD, ACDBE to you, um, can they uh, send you an email to follow up on whatever it is? By all means, I think my email address was was listed at the top of the presentation, uh, but that would be Cordell dot McGarry at City of Chicago. Dot org. And let me also add to this as well. Um, businesses, once you're certified as a DBE or CDBE, your certification is indefinite. That is to say that you remain certified until such time as, as it's deemed that you're no longer eligible, either from the standpoint that um, you're no longer in control of the particular aspect of certification or that you're so successful that you graduated from the standpoint that you're no longer considered economically disadvantaged to a small business. And that's a good thing in that sense. Um, but while that certification has no real expiration date, on an annual basis, we do ask for businesses to uh, file what's called a, a, an affidavit of no change, which basically is a statement uh, supported by updated tax returns that in essence says that there's been no, no real change in circumstances that would affect my eligibility. Therefore, I'm still I'm still the owner of the business. I still control the business, um, and the business still falls within the category of being a small business. So that's important to know. Also, I mentioned earlier that businesses are certified by an area specialization. 
And I used that as an example, the case of, of, of myself, Cordell McGarry, being certified as a plumber. Let's say uh, if things, as, as I'm going along in my business, things pick up and I look at some other opportunities and that one of those opportunities involves maybe taking on another skill set. So let's say I become an electrician in addition to doing plumbing work. Uh, and I want my business to reflect that as well so that I can participate in, in, in contract opportunities as an electrician. There will be no need for me to reapply for certification to get that designation. I would just simply ask for what's called an expansion of my current categories to include the additional work that I do. Now, again, that process is, it involves me telling the story about I work as an electrician or the qualifications that I have as an electrician to be able to manage and control that. So in this sense, the certification grows with you as you grow. And that's the beauty of the certification program that I've seen. I've seen a, quite a few businesses take advantage of that as they find themselves. In the, and, and again, during the, the time, current times of, of, of we're going through now, a lot of businesses having to reinvent themselves. So this, in this sense, the certification can go along with you. That's good to know. All right. Uh, it, one question was, we are newly um, certified DBE. Are there any agencies that help with bidding opportunities? And I'm glad that person asked that question because before you answer that, Cordell, I want to take a stab at it. Uh, we have what we call assist agencies, and um, I directed you to the buying plan um, in my uh, first part of uh, the presentation. Um, that's a great tool. I call it the Bible of the procurement process, because not only does it have um, the 15 month forecasting of opportunities from our sister agencies and some state agencies, it also has information about the assist agencies in the back of that buying plan. We also have them listed on the website. Um, so you can go on there and they're a great resource um, for information about the procurement process, about doing business with the city or the state or the county. Um, they also know about opportunities as well. Um, they are a good networking process if you want to do some joint ventures with uh, other vendors, maybe you're not big enough for the contract and you want to merge with uh, either another smaller um, vendor and the two of you go into a bigger vendor or you may want to go into a bigger vendor if you have a, a piece of that work that you can do. Um, so they always kind of know some of those things. Um, uh, which brings me to the next point. We have um, two great events per year. One is our construction summit in February, and the other is our vendor fair in um, July. Due to COVID-19, we didn't, we weren't able, because we we're going to have it at McCormick Place, we weren't able to do that. Um, so we're pitch hitting with that. We will be having our vendor fair on November 5th, um, uh, it will be three consecutive Thursdays, um, November um, 5th, November 12th, and November 19th. Um, yes. And um, there will be a city, state, uh, county, uh, and all government agencies represented. Um, there also will be some assist agencies aboard. Uh, and given presentations. So that information will be out uh, very, very soon so that you can take a look at the agenda. Uh, you can click on the links and read more about it. You can sign up for any of the workshops. Uh, it will be out very soon. Um, uh, Rodney and I are crossing our fingers. <laughs> But anyway, with that said, I will let you go ahead, uh, Cordell, if you have other sources uh, that you may want to mention for that question. Well, no problem. And you touched on quite a bit of, of the information that I would provide. I would probably add on to that. Um, the SBA has what's called small business development centers, SBDCs. And many of some of those centers, or many of them, I think, are also affiliated with the city by way of assist agencies. So they can also provide you with that information. But there's a particular, and we live on acronyms, unfortunately. There's a particular acronym I want you to keep in mind. It's, it's called PTAC. 
uh, procurement technical assistance centers. Also uh, by the uh, Department of Commerce, uh, and they provide that that real intensive uh, consultation and, and they work hand in hand with small businesses to teach them the rudiments of, of going through the procurement processes of governmental agencies like the city, like the state. Um, they really help you in terms of getting you, help you to put together proposals um, and provide that, that technical expertise that, that you might need in putting together, let's say a bid submission um, or just understanding the contractual process itself. And again, here at the city, we also have workshops on on basically how to how to do business with the city, which can also provide that kind of help as well. So there's a wealth of of information that's out there. There's a, a number of groups and agencies in our community that that are devoted that have devoted and committed to working with small businesses. Yes, and um, let me just say, PTAC will be represented there in the um, uh, SBDC D. S B D I and the Small Business Administration. Um, so all of them will be at the vendor fair. So thank you, Cordell, for that as well. Because I that was just about to come up. Oh, I forgot P Tech. So thank you for mentioning that. Um the person that wrote about the app, app, uh, application, again, Cordell gave you his um email address so you can follow up with him personally yourself. Um, our company is already MBE. Shall we reapply for DBE also? I would say resoundingly yes. Consider the certification programs as tools in a tool belt. So, you know, having certification as an MBE is great for opportunities where MBE participation is, 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 is requested. Uh, but there are other opportunities, let's say, for example, with other agencies uh, or uh, that are funded by other sources of, of money. Like, for example, um, the DBE and ACDB programs are targeted for firms that are looking for opportunities where, let's say, to spend, if you will, it comes from federal dollars. Our other programs are minority business enterprise, our women business enterprise, our um, business enterprise for veterans. They're all looking at opportunities that funded out of the city's corporate budget or local dollars. So when those opportunities come up, you want to be in a position to take advantage of them no matter where the source of, of funding comes from, right? So having that so having that, that certification in your tool belt makes you ready for that. And I'll take I'll take a moment too to say that um this is a process that should be undertaken well before the opportunity presents itself. Like for example, you don't you don't want to wait until you you hear about a contract opportunity to say, okay, I need to get certified, you know, and because the timing of it just doesn't mesh, and it, it won't it won't help you in that regard. But in terms of planning, uh, you know, it's it's good to have that certification available uh, and av for you when that opportunity comes about. And that 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 makes a world of difference. Yes, I I do agree with that. And also, let me just say, um, no one certification necessarily is going to take the same time as another certification. It just depends upon how accurate you are with your records and such, because that was a question that um, I think was um, asked here. So we want to make sure that you know, um, once you put your information in, I'm sure it's a way where you can um, do some follow up if if it's been some months, um, but the process on the general takes about how long, uh, Cordell. If everything is tip top, you know what you're doing. Uh, you got everything a one right. We have no questions for you. It should take perhaps. Well, we we, we want to say after ninety days, and and I, and I say that. Uh, with, with regard to, again, how making sure the story is told. There's also seasonality that you have to consider, too. Um, there are particular periods in time in the course of a year, for example, where we might experience a greater volume of applications than others. So a lot of times that has, it has that can have an impact on processing times. But our, our goal, and most certainly we, we try very hard to live up to it, is to have them done within 90 um, maybe a little slightly longer than that, but roughly 90 days is the average that we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. however, 
However, I'm going to say it because Cordell probably won't, so I can say it. If your stuff is not right, they will have questions for you, which delays the process because they have to go get the information, you know, send out that we need this information from you, depending on how timely you are getting that information back. All while they're working on other contracts as that's going, I mean, other certifications as that's going on. So we're not sitting there just waiting for you to get your information in. Oh, it's wrong. Let me go back to that person. I'm still sitting here waiting for it. We're um, making sure other uh, certification applicants are being seen and their information is being uh, processed as well. So it's all a a juggling act it's all a process but you know you want to make sure that you know you you have your things in on time with that said if there are any additional questions please now put them in q and a um so that we can ask cordell your question if there are no additional questions that you may have i will say make sure you stay tuned to your dps alert if you're not um registered with the dps alert uh, feel free to go online click on the letter put your information in so you can begin getting them because that uh virtual vendor fair will be coming up november 5th and we want to make sure that you are a part of it and any of your other friends uh, that you might uh, know that may need some of this great information. Again, we offer this two times a year in February and we're offering the summer one now in November um, virtually. Um, so we want to um, uh, say thank you for Cordell for imparting that great information. Uh, off to our uh, re, uh, participants. And we also would like to thank the participants for coming and sharing their time to get the information that we have to impart. We say to you, um, stay safe, stay well, wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, and hopefully, if all of those things are done, we will see you sometime uh, in the near future at City Hall. Thanks so much for your time and attention today. And I thank my coworker Rodney LeBeau for his help as well. And we will see you soon. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, thank you everybody.